everybody, good evening. How was your walk day today? Good, good, good. Is hard? Can you hard? Yeah. You can hard, you can open the windows. Anyway, today, there is a lot of new people. Everybody think maybe we have very special things to talk. <laughs> right? How many people really come before, you know? Now here they get a lot of different classes. What do you call it? The first time? Yeah. How many first two people here? Only first. Only today. Yeah. Oh. The other ten left people already come here, right? Before. Yeah. Some uh, other class, some Sean's class, some other class. And yeah, yeah. No. They are always. I'm not what uh, so, um, starting today for a few days, we're going to, a uh, few days, a few weeks, a few months maybe, we're going to be discussing on, <coughs> uh, uh, about uh, the mind, you know, the cognition, um, so the object and object possessor, you know, object possessor or, or the subject, you know, the subject, the mind, which uh, conceives or perceives you know, the object. That's what we've been talking about that. And then, my daughter said, I'm going to be a shoe door to check my hair, and I'm going to check my hair. I'm going to check my hair like this. So, all this you know, about uh, object and object possessor or mind and, you know, uh, these objects um, in accordance with the Buddhist uh, uh, system of Buddhist uh, teachings. And so, according to Buddhist teachings, whenever we study these kind of things, it is always you know, important you know, to uh, set up a proper motivation. And so, uh, what kind of motivation you should set is uh, the very least thing that uh, may I be of great benefit you know, to others. May I be you know, beneficial for others. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to study this. And so what is uh, Buddhism and what is Buddhist teaching? So a Buddhist you know, is, uh, is uh, someone who follows Buddha's teaching, uh, uh, practices Buddhism, uh, follows Buddha's teaching. Um, so Buddha is an uh, uh, enlightened being you know, who uh, came in this world about 2,500 years ago and he gave all these teachings. So those who follow his teachings are called Buddhists. Uh, and so to say what uh, kind of advices or teachings uh, has the Buddha given? And so the, basically, uh, the, the, <coughs> the main uh, advice that he gave, you know, is uh, he said, do not commit any non-virtuous actions, uh, commit only profit virtuous actions, uh, subdue one's mind, and this is the teachings of the Buddha. And so when it says, uh, do not commit any non-virtuous actions, now what are the non-virtuous actions? So any kind of action that harms um, the body, speech, and mind of other beings you know, is non-virtuous actions. And, when, uh, and then commit or accumulate only, only uh, profit virtuous actions. The profit virtuous action 
again, you know, the action that brings benefit to others, uh, uh, help or benefit to others, is a, a virtuous action. And at the very least, you know, if you cannot benefit others, at least do not cause any harm to others. <coughs> and so just to you know, uh, give you some idea about the non-virtuous actions, you know, so they are all kind of condensed into ten non-virtuous actions, you know, which is also explained in many different uh, teachings, you know, different religions. And so this is uh, considered as a non-virtuous action by the Buddhists. Uh, and, and I see that, that, that Christianity believes that is non virtuous action, also, and, uh, and I also think that Islam you know, uh, think that it is a non virtuous action. <coughs> so if we engage in any of these ten non virtuous actions, then that will bring you know, harm to oneself or others. <coughs> <coughs> and so, um, and uh, the opposite of this ten non virtuous action, you know, um, uh, observing not to create uh, any of this ten non virtuous action, you know, is the virtuous action, uh, the perfect virtuous action. Uh, and then he said, uh, in the third line, he said, you know, uh, subdue uh, one's mind thoroughly. Uh, and so when he says subdue one's mind, it means you know, do not uh, um, let the mind uh, uh, engage into uh, the non-virtuous actions. And so doing that, subduing one's mind, you know, is called the teachings of the Buddha. So why did Buddha advise in such? You know, what happens if we create non-virtuous actions? Uh, so because the cause you know, is not good, and therefore the result that comes from there it will be also not good. You know, so uh, if you cause harm to others, as the result, you, know, you will receive the harm. You know, so the person who is creating the action will experience the similar kind of results. For example, when we become angry at some, someone, you know, then we feel unhappy ourselves, right? If we are not angry, it doesn't harm our mind, and right? our mind is you know, at peace and relaxed, right? So because of becoming angry, and then you, you, know, <clears throat> um, you know, feel unhappy, and so feeling unhappy is the result of becoming angry. So if we commit non-virtuous actions, then we will you know, experience suffering. So the suffering you know, is the, uh, the result of the non-virtuous action. And uh, since uh, we all want to uh, experience only happiness and not any uh, and any suffering, you know, therefore, you know, we are advised not to create any non-virtuous actions. <coughs> so, engaging in non-virtuous action, you know, uh, knowingly or unknowingly, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, you engage in those non-virtuous actions because of not having subdued your mind. You know? And so, therefore, uh, subduing the mind is very important. Therefore, it says, subdue your mind thoroughly. Alright. You guys understand? I think you understand, right? Oh, 
Right, so the mind that is to be subdued you know, is the mind that tend to engage in any of the tendent virtuous actions. So not uh, letting the mind fall you know, <clears throat> into the action you know, of creating those non virtuous actions is you know, controlling the mind or subduing the mind. And so this is what you know, basically it is you know, uh, that is advised or you know, taught in Buddhism. So as you, you know, uh, most as most of you have already um, heard or studied the teachings before, you already know that, right? <clears throat> so if we want to have happiness, then we have to create the cause for happiness by ourselves. Right. So in order to receive uh, <clears throat> a good uh, pay, um, then you have to work hard yourself, right? So if we work hard ourselves, then we'll receive you know, a bigger pay. And then so the way I'm much in much did not be over. So if we don't work hard or uh, honestly, then uh, one day the, the, the boss, you know, boss will kick us out, right? Today is a Susu which is the Yapoji Travala, Susu Minita, Kalija, the Kishima Shanga, and the Jitan Dotamiwa. And so it is uh, the you know, way of life, right, that if we want to have happiness, if we want to achieve something, we have to work hard ourselves, right? What is the Chimpa? And it's Hanji, which is the Shuma Yang, and the Chilanki Devan Dugiana. Uh, in, the, in the same way, in Buddha's teaching, it says that if you want to have happiness, then you have to create the cause for happiness yourself. And if you don't want to have any suffering, then you should not engage in the non virtuous actions. And so, uh, therefore, you should you know, subdue your mind. So if we have to subdue our mind, then how do we do it? How do we do that? For example, at the moment, most of us, you know, when we face some difficulties, we are not able to endure those difficulties. And because of not being able to endure that, uh, and even the small you know, hardship you know, um, uh, appears as uh, a great hardship. <coughs> and so, uh, what what kind of um, uh, you know, increases that problem um, or multiplies that problem? You know, is the mind, and that mind you know, it existed within our own continuum. Uh, and so if you, instead of you know, th <coughs> uh, thinking that you know, I'm the only one who's experiencing, you should think that, oh, I'm not the only one who's experiencing this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other people also going through a similar way. And so I'm not the only one. If you think like that, just by thinking like that, it feels a little bit lighter. And then you can think, what other means can I apply, you know, to uh, reduce this problem and so forth. And so, <coughs> so instead of thinking, you know, if, if, thinking in that way, if you keep just thinking about the problem that you're facing, and then um, it becomes, you know, uh, it, it, it appears like you know, becoming bigger and bigger. And so if you just keep on thinking only about that problem and not thinking about you know, the solution for that and so forth, then at the end, you know, you might you know, think so much that you might think of committing suicide and so forth. <laughs> Then you control the control of 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 the control of
So for example, if someone you know, gave you a hard time at work, uh, and, and then if you keep thinking, you know, that was, you know, he, uh, he, he, he treated me very badly, and uh, I must take a revenge, and I must do something even worse you know, to him, and so forth. If you keep thinking like that, then maybe tonight you, you wouldn't be able to even fall asleep. So instead of thinking, you know, <clears throat> that you were treated very bad and you know thinking of taking um, a revenge or retaliating you know, to that person and so forth, if you think that uh, well, maybe I might have made a mistake, you know. So uh, you know, so what, what mistake did I make? You know, what did he say? And maybe I can try to make it better you know, uh, tomorrow and so forth. If you think like that, you know, then you will not have that uh, hostile you know, thought thinking of taking revenge and so forth. And maybe you know, small tomorrow you will forget about it, and then there, there will be no more you know, bothering to you. And so, you know, it makes a difference in this way, you know, by way of thinking. And, uh, you know. and so anyway, so the sufferings, and the you know, physical sufferings and the mental sufferings. Um, so the mostly the physical problems uh, can be uh, uh, um, solved by uh, by the external things like you know, the house, clothes, food, medicine, and so forth. And then not simple can it be simple colleagues done with Tanjuji, Jojo Mato, that's not the thing sent over. Whereas the, the mental problem you know, can be only solved you know, by the mind itself, you know, not from not from not by the outside you know, external things. And this shalom tenjegi, now that tenjegi, that go semi chigiru was. And of course, you know, um, uh, conditioned by some kind of you know, external things, uh, you can, you know, you will be like, you know, happy for some time. What the car kajimaji tenjegi semse, shibas at the condition to call a tama to the ma, that nami juni, so on, I reach in a tama, and this is a coin by this. So, so that's you know, so that's what we're going to study about now, you know, about that mind, you know, that is explained according to the Buddhist uh, scriptures. And so Buddha himself has taught a lot about you know, uh, the you know, cognizer, the valid cognizer, about the mind itself. And whatever Buddha has taught, you know, on uh, uh, about the mind, um, um, uh, and then uh, uh, the Indian pandits or the scholars from India, uh, like the Dharma Kirti, and has uh, uh, taught even more as in commentary to what Buddha taught. And then also, you know, the commentary to that, you know, the teachings uh, you know, on the mind taught by Dharma Kirti, um, you know, the many Tibetan scholars you know, have written a commentary to that, to that uh, as to make it a little bit simpler for us to understand. Um, and so the text that we're going to study today is the text written by Pujo uh, And he was the tutor, you know, uh, to his holiness Dalai Lama, the fourth Dalai Lama. Uh, 
clear what the obstacles in, in studying, um, in you know, engaging in any kind of uh, practices, or studies, and so forth. <coughs> and so usually, you know, in, in Buddhism we have these uh, figures, you know, of the, the protectors who have a very um, fearful, fearful uh, appearance, uh, bulging eyes, you know, or, or a wide open mouth, and, and uh, exposed fangs, and so forth. So that was a frightening, you know, um, <coughs> Beings, so that, those are kind of the protector, protecting you know from all the obstacles you know, that may come in the way to practice Dharma. And then Jambe Yang said, and then that just in Jambe Yang, can you share a line that 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 the Pashera will be taken, that that Jambe Yang can share. Yes, right. And the Manju Gosha, you know, is the uh, same as the Manju Shri, and who is the the, uh, the Buddha of wisdom. And because we have to develop wisdom uh, and by studying this text, therefore we pay homage to the uh, the Buddha of wisdom, the Manju Shri. ว่าเอาเอาเลยถ้าเนี่ยเจอถ้าอืมเรื่องเชื่อว่าเฮียเจอหนูเรื่องนั้นเชื่อว่าเจอเออถ้าเรื่องเชื่อว่าถ้าเ
So you, you will see the, the cup that I'm holding, right? Cup is So the cup is what? It's object? And then uh, the, the eye consciousness that sees the cup, you know, that's, that's grasping the cup, or that sees the cup, is the object possessor. So everything that exists is an object, like we said, right? So the object possessor exists, so therefore object possessor is also object. Right? But the difference here is something <coughs> that is perceived and something that proceeds. You know? So mm. those are the difference, you know, in terms of an object and object possessor. Um, <coughs> so every <coughs> every kind of mind that perceives the object you know, is object possessor. <coughs> and so because it has object, because it has object in its perception, then therefore it's called object possessor. And so because you know because you have the object that you possess you know, that you um, perceive or that you hold or grasp and so forth, therefore you're called object, object possessor. And so what about the object and object possessor? Are they contradictory with each other or not? Well, because Are object they? possessor can also be an object. Mm. Huh? An object possessor can also be an object. Can mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you will understand that, right? Everybody? So 
So is there a common locus you know, of the object and object possessor? Object. They depend on each other. Huh? So an object possessor can be an object, but an object need not necessarily be an object possessor. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But is there a common locus of object and object possessor? A common locus. Something. Common locus means something that is both <laughs> object and object possessor. You can't have one without the other. The object possessor is a common locus. What? The object possessors themselves are the common locus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, we know object possessor is object possessor, <coughs> right. and object possessor is object, right. uh, but it, can you give something you know, that is object possessor, not object possessor itself, but object, something that is object possessor. So that would be the all common locus, you know, that's what it means by common locus. So, so something, you know, so that has to be the third one, you know, so there's the object, object possessor, and there's something, this third thing, which is object, which is also object possessor. Sorry? The concept of the object in the mind of the person uh -huh. perceiving? Concept of object? Like what? Like what kind of concept? Can you name it? Um, the concept of a cup, the union of the object and the awareness. Uh -huh. Like um, your same concept, you know, like the idea of a cup or the eye consciousness that sees the cup? Which one? What, what do you mean by conception? The conscious. Consciousness? Yes. That, you know, that thinks about the cup? Yes. Okay. You're conscious, yeah. So the cup is in the shabbat. The cup is in the shabbat. And you use it as Oh, good. That, ye in the car. Ye in the car. You read it? Ye in the car. That, you're in the car. She's in the car. So that consciousness, right, the mind that perceives the cup. So that mind, you know, is, uh, is the object. So that mind is object? No. It's not? It's an object. But you're giving the example of something that is both object and object possessor, right? Yes. And now you're saying it's but not object? I'm saying, I'm saying that the combination of the awareness and the object in the consciousness, it's not just the conscious that perceives, it's the concept that is formed. But does that exist or not? Whatever you were trying to describe. Does that exist or not? No. So it doesn't it, exist? So it's not an object, I guess. Yeah, it, so it, it, exists, if it doesn't exist. It exists in the, in the mind of the, of the beholder. Does anything exist? Mm -hmm. so, so the common locus is existing. What? Anything that exists is the common locus between. Mm. No? Not necessary. Not necessary. Um, it can be not. That's right. So, Oh, okay, maybe Andy has something else to say. I'm just curious about, like, if we, if, if we think about our own knowing of objects, then aren't we knowing our knowing? Do you know what I mean? So then, the self cognizant Yeah, so I'm curious if it's possible that awareness of being aware is a case of being both an object and a subject at mm -hmm. the same time. So I, I don't know if you guys have a hard time understanding the common locus. <laughs> so when you say common locus, you know, it means like something that is both of it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so between boy and a girl, it would be yeah. a human being, right? Yeah. Their human <clears throat> being is a common locus. Yeah. They are both human beings. Uh, no, not necessary. So that's that's not the common locus. If it's a boy or a girl, it doesn't have to be a human being. No, because there's no common locus of boy and girl. There's no common locus of man and woman. Oh yeah, that's because men and women are an you know, opposite sex, right? So, it's so the other way it'll be different. And uh, the common locus means something that is both of it, like the intersection, um, the intersection of the two circles. So the yeah, the Venn diagram is the intersection of yeah, the two okay. sets. Yeah, but it has to be. It has to fall on both circles. Right. It has to fall, you know, it cannot be just in the middle, it has to fall on both. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and just to, just to give you an example of the object and object possessor, and so like what we, what we talk about the object possessor, like the eye consciousness, right? Eye consciousness is the object possessor, yeah. and the eye consciousness is the object. Yeah. So eye consciousness will be the common locus of object possessor oh, and so the object. So that's what I said, that the, yeah. five, the, the five 
sense, the sense consciousness are the common locus. Yes, sense the consciousness can be the common locus. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but if you say the object itself, you know, yeah. then yeah. no, no, object is not common. You know, no common locus, but it's not object possessor. Yeah. Yeah. How about mind? If you say just mind. Yes, you can say mind itself because you know when we talk about the object possessor, there's more than mind, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so you know, mind is a part of object possessor, and mind is also object. Yes. And so mind would be a common logos of object and object possessor. Yeah. And uh, does it give you some idea? Was it a common logos now? Yeah. yeah. And then there's another word for you know, everything that exists. It's called object of knowledge. Right? Object of knowledge and object, object of knowledge, existence, they are all kind of synonymous. So everything that exists is object of knowledge. If it exists, then it has to be known by mind, right? So it has to be object of knowledge. <coughs> so is there any kind of thing that is not an object of knowledge. Any, anything that exists that is not object of knowledge. Huh? No, if, if it is, is that? No, if it is an existent, then it cannot if, if you're talking about non existent then yes, then, then you can say it's, uh, it's existence, no. Yes, is, is, is there anything an existence? Yeah. Is there any existence that is not object of knowledge? No. 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 And so in Buddhist terms, you know, we use we say that object of knowledge, existence, object, these are all synonymous. And so any any object that can be known is called object of knowledge, right? And so because it is the object, you know, and it is it is something that is you know uh, perceived by um, you know, the the, the, uh, the mind or consciousness, therefore it's called object of perception. And so for the object possessor, it has to have this object. It has to have, have an object, right? The object that it perceives, cognizes, and so forth. For example, is this cup, is, is this cup an, an object, object possessor? Why not? Because it is not an awareness. It does not contain a mind. Huh? It is not an awareness. It is not an awareness. <coughs> it is not an awareness, therefore it is not... It is not uh, therefore it is not an object possessor. That's, therefore it is not an object possessor. The Quran says, You are the Quran says, You are the one who is 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 can, yeah. can one also say that it is not an object possessor because it does not contain a mind? Or is that also as you said? Uh-huh. 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 So, you know, once you did what you said, it is not object possessor because it's not consciousness, right? If you said it's not mind, you know, it's not consciousness. If you said that, that means that if it is not, if it is not consciousness, then it should not be object possessor, right? It's not correct. Yeah, so that would not be correct They're if you said that. Because, yeah. because there is something which yes. is not mind, yes. Yes. but it's object possessor. Namely, person and terms. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So actually, it's very confusing, but you know, it you know, it uh, gives you ideas. You know, uh, opens my up your mind so I, and it gives you idea. So you, you can you can even use it in your daily life. <coughs> so now we're going to study, and uh, now it explains more in detail about the object and object processor. So let's turn to page 8. <coughs> so before that, it was all about someone says this, someone says this is all about debate. So if we don't know basically what is the object and processor, then all this debate will be even more confusing and we will not understand. So let's just go to our <coughs> system, which is in page 8. <laughs> so in our own system, concerning the first uh, from among the two object and object possessor, uh, so the definition of an object is. So can you all say that? What is the object or definition of object? That, that, that which is known by an awareness. So that which is known by an awareness. So you have to memorize that, you have to know that by heart. Mm -hmm. and then you know what is object. So you have to know that. <coughs> so that which is known by an awareness, you know, is the object. Object, right? And so therefore, anything that exists you know, is known by awareness, right? Anything that exists is known by awareness. Is that right? So therefore, it's an object, right? And now it's talking about the different kinds of objects, right? Yeah. And so when objects are divided, they are. And so there are three different types of objects: the appearing objects, and the determined objects, and the object of engagement. <coughs> so appearing object, you know, is almost kind of same as object because appearing object, you know, so every consciousness has an appearing object, right? And so, for example, to eye consciousness, a form appears to the eye consciousness, right? So the form is an appearing object to eye consciousness. And so the eye, you know, the solid eye, the, the physical eye that we see, you know, it's not the eye consciousness, right? So that, that's the form. And then there's the eye socket, or uh, you know, inside the inside the eye ball. What do you call that? Uh, the black part. Pupils. 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 Yeah. And so that is the you know, kind of the. Uh, the basis, the station, you know, for the eye consciousness, you know, what the eye consciousness resides. And because the things, that's like the mirror, you know, so things appear to that, and then from there comes the eye consciousness. You know. I don't know, the, maybe scientists to give it a different explanation. Explanation. But we put it in the top and they don't want to cover it. 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 And so there's a, like the object, and then the object appears you know, to the, the pupil, and then you know, from there you know, comes the eye consciousness. You know, so that is you know, um, the, the process. <coughs> so when the, the object you know, uh, appears you know, to that pupil, and then from there comes the uh, the eye consciousness, you know, the uh, ceased eye consciousness, so that's called the appearing. It appearing to the people actually, and that's called the appearing, you know, appearing object. And so the appearing object is in every in every consciousness, you know, so uh, 
um, <coughs> um, so if it is an appearing object, it is perceived by you know, the consciousness. And so it's, uh, you know, um, if it is consciousness, it has to have an appearing object. You know, so the object has to appear to it. So if it is, if it is human being, is it necessary to have hair on the head? If it's human being, is it necessary to have hair on the head? No. 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 They talk about right? What about having a teeth? If it's a human being, is it necessary to have teeth in their mouth? No. 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 But what about you know, being able to speak? If, if it's a human being, is it necessary for them to be able to speak? No. no. How is it pervade? Yeah, pervade. It's a verb pervade, and yeah. it's a noun pervasion. Yeah. Okay. So how do you how do you say if a human being is is pervaded by being able to speak, or being able to speak is pervaded by human being? Being able to speak is is pervaded by also being a human being by being a human being. Uh, being able to speak is pervaded be, by a human being, or by being a human being. Yeah. Oh. Or can you say a human being is pervaded because by? Because a human being could be dead. Uh -huh. so speak. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying like the example of using the word pervaded. Yeah, you would say that the one is pervaded by the other. Yeah, so a human being is pervaded by being able to speak. Can you say that? You can say that, but it might not be correct. Yeah. No, no, no. no, 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 no these are, he means pervasion. Is that, is that the way to say it? Yeah, in a logical statement. So pervaded means always contains. Well, that's what I'm trying to say, you know, it's like pervade, you know, so it's, if it's human being, is it necessary to be pervaded? That's a pervasion, right? Uh, if it's human being, is it necessary to be pervaded by it? Um, Must it contain the ability? If it's human being, uh, no. I mean, the, the example is a little odd over here because of the uh, the two entities involved. Yeah. Uh, but, but, <coughs> but I think that, that what you're saying is correct, that the human being is pervaded by being able to speak, except it's not in this case. Yes, of course, it's not right, but, yeah. you know, the term using the pervade. Mm -hmm. So, if, uh, uh, so if his human being is necessary to be pervaded by being able to speak? No. So, you know, that the word pervaded, that, I think yeah. this is what you should understand also. Yeah. Pervade means, necessary, like I said, you know, the meaning, you know, is it, you know, human beings are pervaded by being able to speak, right? And, uh, and that means, like, if it's human being, is it necessary to be able to speak? Yeah. So that's what the, that's, basically it means. That's, yeah. Whenever it is case X, mm -hmm. it is also necessarily case mm -hmm. Y. That's pervasion. Mm -hmm. So if it's if it is a human being, it's necessarily able to speak. Able to speak would be yeah. a pervasion between the two. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, so if 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 you say yes, human being, as a mean. Usually, I think a noun pervades another noun, and I think you guys are talking about uh, verbs and using. That's why it's better to say nouns. being being a human being and being able to speak, because then it's just a verbal statement. You know, different term for you know trying to like you know trying to make it exactly like like an in Tibetan but you know the meaning is means necessary. So if it's human being, is it necessary to be able to speak? So you understand that part, right? You all say no, right? All men are mortal. About the famous Western Greek one, all men are mortal. All men are mortal. That's a provision. Being a person. But that that there is a provision for that. Right? There is a provision for that. There is, and it's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, we're, we're trying to think of something that's not true and trying to make you say that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so if you say true, then I can say, oh, that's not true because it's that. No? We can debate with you. That, that's He's true. trying to pick a fight. <laughs> pick a fight, yeah. Probably, though. Manto, that you don't have to worry about the person who's in the movie that was told you. And Manto, that's not true. Yeah, that's not true. 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 That's not
She got a little toy and I love to do you, you might have seen, you know, some monks, you know, doing debate, right? You know, when they debate, they always clap hand. And you know, says, so you ask question, if it's a human being, is it necessary to be able to sit? I can't tell you that, 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 I can't tell you that. And so you ask all these different questions, you know, and then somebody, you know, if you say it wrong, and then you can say, oh, you can say, oh, it's, you know, it's wrong because it's not necessary that way, and so forth. So you, then you say more things. So, so that's how you debate, you know. It just is 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 to you know like sharpen your mind, you know, and find out you know, and, and 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 understand you know, the right uh, thing. So if if, uh, if somebody says as an answer yes, there's a pervasion, and then the other guy the debater say. says no, gives a counter example. Yes, yes. that's right. Yes. So, oh no, there's somebody I know who yes. doesn't speak. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They lost their ability to speak. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, it, it helps your, you know, uh, your, uh, to improve your brain or uh, intelligence and you become more smart, intelligent. And so this kind of uh, study you know, on philosophy and like the collected topics, uh, talking uh, uh, um, about things like existing in the object and so forth, and also like debatings, you know, that's of course, you know, has been a kind of tradition of study in the monasteries. But now His Holiness the Lama has established that even among the, um, um, the secular, you know, like schools, you know, where the people, the secular people will have to also study uh, the debates. So anyway, uh, we're talking about the provision. And so if it is consciousness, then it is necessary to have a pairing object. And so appearing in object is that the object that appears you know, to the consciousness. Right? So the forms appear you know, to the eye consciousness. And then the sound you know, to the ear consciousness. You know, the sound appear to the ear consciousness. Um, or, or we can, in other words, we can say heard, but the appearing object you know, will be like that. You know, that appears you know, to the sound appear to the ear consciousness. The, the smell you know, appears you know, to the nose consciousness. The taste you know, appears to the tongue consciousness and so forth. So the so anything that appears you know, to uh, the consciousness is not necessarily existent, right? not, not necessary to be not necessary to be true. In other words. Uh, and for example, like in the morning when you wake up and you look in the mirror, you see yourself there, right? You appear in the mirror. Are you in the mirror? No. That's not you, right? The one that that's appearing in the mirror is not you, right? Mm-hmm. So that's not true. No, no, but you're not thinking of my So it, you know, it it appears that if it appears to you, it doesn't have to be. That which appears to you doesn't have to be. And a mean chip on that is camera than a concept of race or what? a person with a bile disease. Uh, if you look at you know the uh, snow mountain, it, it will appear as yellow to him. Mm-hmm. It's because of his disease, right? The bile disease, mm-hmm. which makes him to see things yellow, yellowish, and so even the snow appears as yellow. But snow is not yellow, right? Is it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the yellow snow. Really? That's the yellow snow. But how do we know we haven't got a defect in our And then also we see Mumbo can any car that they are can't go to the wall. And so again also if we wear you know glass you know, glasses with a, you know, a blue lens, I will see the white mountain as blue, right? Again. The, is, no, no, the white mountain is not blue, right? So, it, it, even though it appears as blue, it's not necessary. 
but it is not blue. It appears as blue, but it's not blue. That's why. Kaje, that's why. Sir, my. But now you say that Kaje, my dear, Corona, can now that now that yoga, my ego, my is what Kaje. That is the shipa. Kankala, now you are this, now you say. So you know, if it is, if it is a uh, period object, it doesn't have to be that. Uh, so every every subject, uh, every consciousness has a uh, period object. <coughs> and so then the determined object you know, is the is the, is the uncommon object of that particular subject or that particular mind. So the determined object you know, is not in every subject. So determined object is an object of only a conceptual mind. So again, in a, in a, what is conceptual mind, right? You know, so the, the determined object is an, an, an object of, of only a, a conceptual mind. So again, what is conceptual mind? Uh, I mean, it will come in more detail right? later, but just to give you an idea now. So, conceptual, right? Conceptual mind. So, only the conceptual mind uh, has a uh, determined object. So, a determined object doesn't exist in every mind. Uh, and so it is the uncommon object you know, of uh, the conceptual mind. <laughs> so conceptual mind you know, has to, it's as a mind you know, that cognizes, it's a mind that cognizes its object by kind of some kind of reason, you know, by some kind of reason. It doesn't, Cognize it right away. It, it doesn't cognize directly. It has to. It, it has to cognize inferentially right, by applying some kind of reasons. Uh, but a conceptual mind can also cognize by the means of a mental image, not necessarily a reason. Mm -hmm. Inferential consciousness, an inferential uh, cognizing mind will need a valid reason. Mm -hmm. But a conceptual mind by itself will cognize by a mental image, mm -hmm. whether that's a meaning generality or sound generality, but it's always a mm -hmm. mental image and not the actual object. So anyway, so you know, it's, it's, it's meant to say like not a direct object. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's not direct, it has to you know, uh, go through different factors, you know, not just seeing it right away. Tell my embarrassed. 
대도 대, 이거 제가 나한테 물어보시라고. 이겼다, 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 이겼지. 대신이가 제가 나한테 물어보라고. 근데 별로 없어. 대신은 지금 별로 없어. 대도 대신이가 지금 저거 나한테 물어보시라고. 못하다가 못하다가 하기서 대신 나오나? 그래. 말만 대답이 되거든 갈라. 그래. 다 갈라. 아니 된 다음 된 많이 받으면 같이 나오고 너네로 나오겠다. 된 점에 투발해 된 많이 받으면 나오게 나오겠다. 그렇지? 된 많이 받으면 나오나? 응. 된 점에 투발해 된 많이 받으면 나오겠다. 그런 점에 또 많이 받지. 이 나라에 된 많이 받으면 나오겠다. The doctrine of exclusion, right? So, like, you understand, and uh, like, first, when you see things directly, like, with a, a, a new unmistaken awareness, then there is a discrimination, for example, the cup as being everything, as being the opposite of everything that it is not. So, it's, it's a, the generic image is created by exclusion of what the thing, the opposite of what the thing is not. So, I don't know, it's negative. very hard to yeah, say. Yeah. So, so, so the only negative. tool for a conceptual consciousness, the way it gets at its object, yeah. is by this the, the, the opposite of the everything that is not the object. Yes. Meaning yes. that it loses yeah. all the vital characteristics of the object, and it's a yeah. very bland mental image. Yes. Yes. Exactly, uh, yeah. and, uh, so it's, it's, but it's hard to say. But it's only <laughs> true for conceptual <laughs> consciousness. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, that's true. It's like that, yeah. There is a Toba letter and a Maila to the editor. So, usually, you know, the, therefore, therefore, you know, the conceptual mind it is mistaken, yep. you know, to it is a period object. Exactly. Yeah. It is, it is, uh, you know, it is mistaken to the appearing object, but it is not mistaken to its object. Right. Object of, uh, yeah. There is a Tanu to Pomala, and it permits the and so, for example, like you know, like you were saying about the the, the generic image you know, of the cup that is appearing, right? So the generic image you know, will be the the appearing object, you know, and then the cup itself will be the uh, what do you call that the oh, object of engagement. Uh, and so uh, the concept for the conceptual mind, the determined object and the object of engagement will be same. Yeah. The same same object. Uh, so the, the conceptual mind, you know, when the object appears, it appears in a mistaken way. And so, uh, you know, to the eye consciousness, you know, the appearing object can be cognized just as uh, just as it appears, just as it appears. You know, but to the uh, conceptual mind, it cannot. You know, the appearing object will be different you know, from what it really appears, uh, what it really can cognize. And so the appearing object, you know, comes to every every kind of consciousness, you know, whether it's conceptual or non-conceptual consciousness. <laughs> so anyway, conceptual mind, you know, is you know, is uh, you know, uh, grasping or you know, apprehending its object uh, and mixed with this, mixed with the the uh, the generic image you know, of that object. And so it's not being able to you know, uh, apprehend its uh, raw object. And so for example, like you know, when you see somebody you know, at a very distance and coming appearing coming to you, oh that looks like such and so and so. We have that idea, right? We're not exactly sure that is that person exactly. And so, oh, it looks like the so and so. What's that? 
And, and so it's uh, the, the conceptual consciousness is like that. So conceptual consciousness is only you know, a mental consciousness. You know, so there's no you know, sense consciousness. You know, that is conceptual consciousness. Uh, and so then the, the, the non-conceptual mind you know, will be all the sense consciousnesses. That's all the five sense consciousnesses will be non-conceptual mind. And so the determined object you know, is uh, only an object you know, of uh, the conceptual mind. And so of course, you know, the you know, determined object you know, is the main object you know, of the conceptual mind. So, uh, so then the object of engagement you know, is, it exists in every uh, valid mind. And so, um, uh, the object of engagement, you know, would be an object that appears and that you know that is uh, apprehended, you know, by the, the the subject. And so, for example, you know, when we talk about and so the conceptual mind you know, conceiving, uh, no, no, conceptual mind perceiving uh, the base. Always conceiving. Conceptual mind cannot perceive. Yes. Conceptual mind has to conceive. And a concept, conceptual mind conceiving base, you know, uh, uh, so the meaning generality of that base you know, will be its appearing object, and the base itself you know, will be the determined object and object of engagement. Right. Wow. But does it imply Wait, that there's a label? Have you labeled it then to make it an engaging object? Uh, no, it's, it's the object itself. Oh, okay. So, like in you know, the cup, you know, that appears, you know, to that conceptual mind. Yeah. yeah the cup in is the, um, you know, the cup is the determined object and object of engagement, and the uh, the generic image of that cup, you know, will be the appearing object. Wait, it's still Yeah. Okay, so the the appearing object is the the the, it's the mistaken one. The concept of the cup. Uh, so, so just to to clarify, when you see the cup, the engaging object means like the actual matter, like the the cup itself, yeah. That's engaging my eye consciousness, mm -hmm. my my visual perception. Mm -hmm. That's the engaging object. Then the uh, determined, object. determined object is the is also that's that's conceptual, isn't it? Yes. That's the that's like me saying that's a cup, uh -huh. right? So that becomes conceptual. Mm -hmm. You already become conceptual. The determined object is conceptual. That's why I'm asking. Yes. Like, that's what I understood yes. before. So, so the determined I'm... object is only valid for a conceptual mind. That but, first yeah. mind that you mentioned is a perceptual, is a visual yeah. concept, yes. not a conceptual mind. Exactly. At the very next instant, perhaps, or maybe after several instances of that perceptual of the visual consciousness, a conceptual mind arises, and the determined object is valid only for that conceptual mind. Yeah. And the reason it's called determined is because you determine. Like right. That's right. A it's a, it's a determinative a right. no label. So... Yeah. So then that's, that's conceptual. But, but what is... So the determined object will be the cup, uh -huh. you know, so that which apprehends that determined cup object, you know, will be, you know, the conceptual, conceptual mind. So that which determines that as an, as an cup you know, is the conceptual mind. 
Yes. And so the cup itself is the you know, determined object. Is actual cup or the cup? Actual cup. It's, it's both the determined object and the object of engagement. Engagement, yes. yes. Both, yes. both of them are the same for the conceptual mind. For the conceptual mind, yeah, for the conceptual yeah. mind. Maybe it makes difference if it's so for the conceptual mind. Yeah. Not in general, but for the conceptual mind, it's the yeah. same. It it's also a, difficult to keep track of the perspective from which we are so yeah, the, the cup you know, will be the determined object, and um, and so which you know, the mind which determines that as a cup, you know, is the conceptual mind. So just like yourself, given the you know, if there's a food and um, you know in front of you on the table, you are the eater, yes. and then the food is to be eaten, mm -hmm. and you are the eater. Food is to be eaten. Mm -hmm. so so engaging, like engaging object is the same. Also, is a copy. Yes, yes the copy. So engaging object and determined object are synony synonymous. Then? Uh, for the conceptual yeah. mind, yeah. For, the for the conceptual, conceptual mind. mind, not in general, but in for the conceptual mind, they are same. Oh, okay. I think it would help. But I think you have to say that the word, that the free, determined object is not valid for any other kind of mind. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Except yeah. yeah. for the oh, conceptual yeah. mind. Yeah. 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 Which, which, which conceptual mind was mistaken? The concept. The concept is mistaken. 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 The concept is Every kind of conceptual mind. So Buddha doesn't have a concept. That's right, yeah, Buddha doesn't have a concept. The Buddha has no concepts. No concepts. The non concepts. So, anyway, just, just yeah, so you should all understand that determined object is an only object of the conceptual mind. So, other minds don't have determined object. And so the conceptual mind, uh, sorry, um, the determined object and the object of engagement, you know, uh, is the same you know, for a conceptual mind. Okay. And how are they? Would you mind saying how they're different? Objects of engagement and determined objects, how they're different? だ、こう見えるのは、so, uh, it's, it's uh, very similar, you know, so determined, so it says determined, what do you, what do you understand when you say determined? The clay, Judgment's been made, so, and names been made. Saying this is so and so. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, so, yes. in other words, I mean, uh, I would have said apprehended object. Uh, the object that, so, so, no, so the appearing and apprehended objects are, in other texts, there is a four, four way uh, differentiation. Appearing, apprehended, uh, determined, and object of engagement. Yeah. And appearing and apprehended are seen as very uh, similar. Yeah. So so you, so you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's down and are, are very similar together. If oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 That, that but sense, it yeah. says in this text to an, uh, at a later line that appearance and apprehended are similar. Oh, I see. So. Is yeah. determined can be labeled similar to being labeled? Sorry. Is similar to being labeled if you say determined. So it's called it the rest. Like it. Yeah. The when I was using it, it was the not really leveling. It's not leveling. So it's thinking that it is. This is cup. You know, the mind that says this is cup. Yeah. Like the mind that thinks this is cup. Yeah. Or, yeah. Determines that this cup. Like thinks this is cup. Is it like um, neighbor? Like Venus child? Neighbor? Neighbor? To discriminate, like you have some object there, and then when you correctly identify, oh, that's a good idea. like this is, you know, distinct from that one. Mm -hmm. No, no, discrimination. We say in English, it means to actually select 
something from out of its background to segregate it as a thing separately. Mm -hmm. So we were talking before about the it something being the opposite of everything that it is not. So kind of that process. So when you see the cup, you also see the things around the cup, the shapes, the colors, and then your mind kind of discriminates or segregates that patch of color and shape as one thing, separate from everything around it. Mm -hmm. And then you already discriminate it, like that's an object, that's an object, these mm -hmm. things are separate, mm -hmm. kind of. It doesn't mean you labeled it, but you're perceptually, you are breaking things apart in the field into discrete yeah. objects. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's true. So that's determined object. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it that's is, what it's talking about. about. And, and object of engagement is what? I just need to know from my mind, this is where, where it fits here, where it does not fit in there. Can you not say... To use in a personal way. So the, it means like the, you know, the, the, the object you know, that you hold, and the, the object that you mainly hold. And so what you're holding here you know, is the cup, right? So the cup you know, with the object of engagement, that's the main object that you hold. Kind of like the object of certainty? Or kind of certainty. Focus. Yeah. Yeah. So this again, you know, it, it, it you know, you will be applying to a different kind of mind. So when you're applying this to the uh, conceptual mind, you know, then uh, uh, the, 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 the generic image you know, of the cup you know, will be the, uh, uh, the appearing object, you know, appearing object, and uh, you know, the cup will be the determined object and uh, uh, the object of engagement for the conceptual mind. Must I, yeah. must I be able to label it for, for it to be a determined object? For example, let's assume I'd never come here before and I saw a Dorje. Okay? And I see it. I you know, I know what it looks like. And that is, is that a determined object if I can't actually label it? Uh -huh. Must I be able to label it for it to be... で、まあ、それで、それで、パターンも取れな。それで、それで、それで、みんな大丈夫だ。それで、それで、それで、みんな大丈夫だ。それで、それで、それで、みんな大丈夫だ。それで、それで、それで、みんな大丈夫だ。
uh, uh, for the object of comprehension. That's true. Yes, yes. They call it Tarawa. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so again, you know, when we like talk about you know the four different types of the object, like the, the apprehended object, and so um, so so that the general generic image you know, of uh, the cup, you know, when because somebody told you you know cup has to be like this, and then you have this idea of a cup, you know, because you know it's it's like that. Therefore, it's, you know, uh, therefore that should be a cup like that. So that idea of the cup and it will be a period object you know, for the conceptual mind, and it will be an object of apprehended an you know, apprehended object. And uh, you know, appearing object you know, for the conceptual mind. No, that is that. What is that? Topic and nine thousand you touching is two hours, two pages. And so, uh, so for the conceptual mind, the appearing object and apprehended object will be same. And the shared and you in two pages. And the determined object and object of engagement will be same. That you only the card that shared you in the card. So, the, what is the actual object? The actual object will be the determined object and the object of engagement. So the so the idea of the cup, you know, because you you know have somebody explaining to you oh cup has to be like this, and then you have this idea of the cup. So that is the appearing object. And uh, an uh, uh, apprehended object you know, for the conceptual mind. Okay. So the appearing object exists in every consciousness, right? What about the determined object? Only What was the answer to that? object is only to the conceptual mind. It is object. It 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 exists only in a, in a, a conceptual mind. And then object of engagement. Is there object of engagement in every consciousness? Uh, uh, both in conceptual and non-conceptual mind. Right? There is uh, an object of engagement for both. There's an object of engagement, but it did not exist. Uh, it did not be an existent, like the Hans of a rabbit. Is, you know, I can, I can conceptualize the Hans of a rabbit, uh -huh. but it doesn't exist. Uh, so it's not not an object of engagement in the sense that it's not an object. Imaginary object. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that that would be not object of engagement at all, right? Yeah. So it's it's, it's not an object. Uh, no, I mean, if if it is a uh, mind, yeah. is it necessary to have engaged object of engagement? That's the part that I'm not sure of because uh -huh. I think that uh, I have to go look at it. Uh -huh. yeah, maybe I don't know. The definition of object of engagement isn't t entirely clear. I thought before it means like the object which directly engages uh, an, uh, an awareness. So like the light reflected off the surface of the cup is striking my eye, which produces the visual, you know, perception of the cup. So <coughs> therefore, in that sense, it's the object of engagement. Is it like that? Mm -hmm. So in in which case the So object of engagement would be the, the main object of that con, uh, that con consciousness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So With every consciousness would have its main object, right? Yeah. Right. So the main object of right. any consciousness right. you know, would be the object so, of so engagement. Yeah. So so there is always an object of engagement, whether that is a valid yeah. object or not. Is the same. Right. Yeah. It's a different thing, yeah. Right. But uh, there is an object of engagement in every consciousness, right? Right, okay. Yeah. So then uh, engagement only insofar as it's what the consciousness, particular consciousness, is dealing with at the moment, the main thing that is... The, yeah, main thing is uh, proceeding or conceiving. But, for example, it doesn't have to be real. So if you're dreaming, uh -huh. you know... 
それは女優の試合で、ね、女優になった、ね、ましたら、やばいことです。<笑>
他说我自己才光高兴的，真真真。对。Can I just make this very short? Actually, just give me a yes or no answer. <laughs> <laughs> If it's too long, an explanation will go away to the next time. Is concept of chair permanent or impermanent? What, what is that? Like concept of chair. Concept of chair? Like concept of the or concept of cup. Uh -huh. Is that permanent or impermanent? Yes. So if it is appearing object uh, of the conceptual mind, then it is prominent. It's prominent? Yes. Okay. Yes, I 